Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclopes Oz and here is your detailed forecast update for March 14th, 2025. A lot to get through today, including heavy rainfall expected across far north Queensland and north Queensland over the next week and a half. We're expecting falls up to 500 millimetres and slightly heavier than that as well. Some heavy falls also expected over the Northern Territory with developing tropical lows slash tropical cyclones and we're expecting a tropical cyclone as well offshore from Western Australia. All of that plus more coming up in today's for the forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. But starting things off this morning over in far north Queensland where some respectable rainfall accumulations have been recorded overnight. Now up in far north Queensland when a couple of showers are on the forecast it is not unheard of for 100 to 150 millimetres to fall so I don't want anybody to be freaking out right now in the sense that this is heavy rainfall that's going to cause flooding once again because it isn't. It is still some heavy rainfall though now around the Ingham and the Cardwell Gap area. Falls between 100 out to 150 millimetres were reported overnight as you can see there have been some heavy showers developing thunderstorms moving into the far north Queensland's Cassiary Coast especially on the southern side of the Cassiary Coast and some stronger shower bands also now moving into the northern areas of the Casper Coast as well up around the Cairns area. You can see it's overall a pretty turbulent picture as well around the entirety of the Coral Sea, especially uh, between uh, or running across that surface trough from the southern point of the Cape York Peninsula out into the Coral Sea out towards Willis Island. There's a lot of cloud activity, a lot of convection and just a lot of showery stuff that's been picked up uh, by the radar system on Willis Island and also around the Cairns area. So it is a rather turbulent picture out there. Plenty of rainfall is streaming ashore into the Casper Coast and we're expecting more of these showers to be continuing throughout the remainder of today and so these showers are quite gnarly and certainly seem to be taken quite seriously they are a risk of dropping rainfall accumulation significant enough to cause flash flooding i mean if we take a look at the one here that's by the time this video is releasing it's probably dropping a load around the ingham area it's probably close to 70 millimeters an hour that is quite heavy stuff and again far north queensland no stranger to these rainfall accumulations that's for sure but still this is some significant stuff and certainly worth taking note of and the rainfall will only increase throughout the remainder of today so let's jump into the forecast right now and see what we're expecting from this rainfall event that i've been talking about for the last couple of days so interesting uh, interestingly enough the forecast was actually bumped down on it last night which is good news and I did have a small hunch that that was going to happen but the forecast has reduced the amount of rainfall that is expected and whilst we ne were never expecting a flooding threat uh, from this rainfall event, it is good to know now that the risk of moderate or major river in flooding has been pretty much put to bed. So very, very good uh, to hear that, that's for sure. The axis is still the forecast model of choice right now. There are some discrepancies between the forecast models, and I'll get to that in just a second. So using the convective forecast model to see what's happening throughout the remainder of today, we've got heavy rainfall streaming in in shower bands throughout the remainder of today, especially throughout this morning, and then once again throughout this afternoon and evening. Up in the uh, southern parts of the Cassaway Coast, the heaviest falls will actually be concentrated between Cardwell down to Townsville, but they should remain out of Townsville for the most part. So Ingham certainly is going to be copping a few more heavy showers throughout the remainder of today and we could be seeing 24-hour uh, accumulation starting now up to about that 200 millimeter mark. So some heavy stuff is possible around Ingham and certainly something to keep in the back of your head. Don't really go outside, I guess, because it is going to be rather unpleasant. You will be caught in a pretty significant downpour as well, chances are. And then throughout tomorrow, we're expecting moderate heavy showers to be easing off through the morning before picking up again as we head further north up into the uh, Daintree Rainforest and then for locations further north of that. And that is because that developing monster soon trough which you could see up here which really does begin to take shape through Saturday is going to be funneling ashore some pretty heavy rainfall into parts of far north Queensland especially around the Cape York Peninsula throughout tomorrow afternoon and then into the Daintree rainforest as we get towards tomorrow evening. Now moderate heavy falls are possible throughout this rainfall event here or throughout tomorrow night I should say it's not really classifiable as a rainfall event but moderate heavy falls still expected for the most part in the Daintree rainforest and up to Cooktown they will be moderate. We're still expecting some heavier rainfall accumulations into the early hours of Sunday morning and some of these falls here could be approaching 75 millimetres an hour and we could be seeing six hourly rainfall accumulations anywhere between about 30 out to about 120 millimetres up into parts of the Daintree rainforest with the highest accumulations in the 24 hours to 9am on Sunday morning up to about 150 millimetres in the Daintree. By around 7 o'clock in the morning the rainfall will begin to pipe up for the Casper Coast as well now because it is going to be coming in from the southeast we're not expecting heavy rainfall in the Cairns area but a few showers are possible throughout Sunday morning and into Sunday afternoon. The heaviest falls will be through early uh, Sunday morning and into uh, Sunday afternoon around the Casper coast before they ease off as we get towards late Sunday evening and they st head steadily south as well. We can see the rainfall initially isn't really a problem around the Cardwell Gap area or into the southern parts of the Cassowary coast around Ingham and Halifax but the rainfall will then begin to steadily pick up there throughout the afternoon in Sunday and into Monday and we're expecting some isolated heavy showers as well as far south as Townsville and then right down the uh, wet Sundays as well we're expecting some showers moving through those areas and that's another interesting aspect of the forecast as well. We could be seeing some heavy rainfall as a result of these showers into the wet Sundays 
Sundays around the Proserpine and the Mackay area, pushing this, uh, things forward again. You can see that rainfall continuing through Monday morning. Like I said, still going to be at its heaviest around Ingham and the Hinchbrook Island area. We're seeing a lot of these showers sweeping in from the southeast and then getting caught up against the coast and just swinging themselves up uh, alongside Townsville and then up in towards the Ingham area. And that's very similar to how the rainfall is going to be playing out today or how it has planned uh, played out over the last 24 hours. This is very much what the rainfall we're expecting to be like on Monday. So pretty much a carbon copy of what we're seeing today. And then through Monday night, the rainfall is expected to pick up once again. We're seeing a very turbulent picture out here in the Coral Sea because of a developing tropical low over in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Now, this is where things turn cyclonic for parts of the Gulf of Carpentaria. We are expecting this tropical cycle, uh, tropical low to develop into a mature tropical low, and it does have a hot shot if it does get itself over water and sustain itself over water, which is not what the major forecast models are suggesting right now. But if it is to remain over the Gulf of Carpentaria, it should become a tropical cycling conditions are very favorable for it. Uh, but it looks like it's just going to have too much land interaction, especially with the other major forecast models calling for it to be over the Northern Territory. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this is because when we have tropical lows or tropical depressions over in the Gulf of Carpentaria, we see a lot of rainfall swung around from the Coral Sea and into the far north of Queensland. That's why we're expecting more rainfall to pipe up next week. But that's also why it's quite uncertain. The forecast model that we're looking at right now, the axis is calling for this system to be basically the strongest out of all of the possible solutions right now. But if we contrast that with another forecast solution, you can see it's actually a very weak system and as such, not that much rainfall can be expected up in far north Queensland. So it's still a little bit of an uncertainty right now. And we're leaning on the side of there's probably not going to be as much rainfall as we initially thought up in the far north areas of Queensland or along the central Queensland coastline through Monday and in towards Tuesday, especially if that tropical low does, doesn't develop. So what you're looking at right now is the worst case scenario, but I'm illustrating this just so that people know the absolute worst that could be inbound. And chances are the rainfall will only be about half of what I'm about to say. But anyways, let's get stuck straight into it again. That rainfall being quite prevalent around the Casbury Coast throughout Monday and into towards Tuesday as well. Heavy showers expected to continue through Tuesday and in towards Wednesday. And we're expecting isolated periods of heavy rainfall as well along uh, the uh, North Queensland coastline between Townsville right down towards Mackay and then through the Whitsundays through Wednesday and in towards Thursday as well. And then as that tropical low is expected to move inland over the Northern Territory and over towards Western Australia where it will have a second shot at life. That's a bit of a spoiler for the end of the video. Uh, you can see that the rainfall does then begin to ease off throughout the uh, far North Queensland coastline. There will be still a few showers lingering of course it is still the wet season but it looks like that rainfall will then start to pipe down for a little bit uh, by the looks of things as we have the forecast right out and towards the end of the forecast period. Now there are still some major discrepancies like I said between the forecast models you can see the eastern wave really not calling for anything in the way of rainfall and that's because this low pressure system is way inland and basically doesn't even develop properly so it's not going to have an opportunity to drag in a lot of rainfall but there are some huge discrepancies between the forecast models at this time and I want everybody to understand that that whilst the rainfall this weekend and in towards Monday is very much set in stone the rainfall for Tuesday out towards Saturday is very much up in the air right now and we're not 100% sure what's going to happen I'll get to my hot take in just a few moments the GFS has actually been calling for a bit of a rainfall depression over in the Coral Sea at some point to be funneling ashore some significant rainfall accumulations into the North Queensland coastline especially through Wednesday and in towards Thursday I'm not really sure what to make of that I mean that would be classed as a rainfall depression through here and would certainly cause some problems but considering it's not reciprocated between other forecast models I mean the axis uh, has been calling for the significant rainfall accumulations but for a completely different reason and the Eastern River is calling for a low pressure system over in the Northern Territory's heart and I mean to be honest it'd be really hard to kind of pinpoint a bit of a low pressure system through here whilst some heavy falls are still expected on Tuesday and Wednesday as a bit of a trough lines itself up on the Queensland coastline we'll get into detail in that and in the future forecast update the rainfall forecast like I said is still very much uh, up in the air right now now, my personal hot take on that as we take a look at rainfall accumulations over the selected period of time is the rainfall through Saturday and Sunday is very much set in stone. And whilst it won't be an extended rainfall event, we can expect a couple of hours of very heavy rainfall through Saturday night for the North Queensland coastline and then through Saturday night and towards Sunday morning, especially through Sunday morning and then perhaps again Sunday night and towards Monday morning for the Cassidy Coast, especially down towards the Ingham and the uh, Halifax sort of area. Some heavy falls are possible in those locations. The rainfall should ease off through Monday night and towards Tuesday morning. We're not expecting too much in the way of significant rainfall there. But then it looks like through Tuesday uh, afternoon and into Wednesday afternoon through that 24-hour period, some significant falls are possible around the Cardwell Gap area right down to about Bond, and that does include Townsville. And the forecast for that is still very uncertain at this time, but we might see an upper-level low-pressure system set itself up offshore from the coastline. That's kind of what the forecast models have been saying for a couple of days now. And when we see those upper-level uh, tropical lows uh, offshore from the Queensland coastline, they can funnel in some incredible rainfall accumulations. So that were driving factor behind the uh, 20, uh, the, uh, what were they? 
the 25th January um, through to February floods. I, I'm completely forgetting right now, but the floods just gone up in far north Queensland, and upper level low was the reason why some days they had so much rainfall up there. I hope that does make a bit of sense. So yeah, in terms of rainfall accumulation, it's very hard to say at this point in terms of the longer range, but over the next couple of days, some significant force can be expected up to around that 100 millimetre mark throughout much of the uh, Casper Coast and into the Daintree Rainforest as well. Uh, 100 millimetre rainfall accumulations along the coast, right from the tippy northern point of the Cape York Peninsula at as far south as about Mackay actually throughout the remainder of the next couple of days with higher accumulations expected into the Daintree Rainforest, which could be as high as about 250 up to about 350 millimetres as you can see here on the forecast models. Some pretty significant rainfall accumulations possible there. And then heavy falls also expected between Cairns, but not including Cairns, so down the Yarraba Peninsula and then as far south as Innisfail and Tully, South Mission Beach, expecting some significant falls in those areas around that 200 to 250 millimetre mark. And again, up to about 300 millimetres can be expected around the Ingham area. A lot of that will actually be coming through today. We're also expecting some significant falls through this weekend in those areas as well. Rainfall should keep itself out of Townsville. You can see about 50 millimetres possible there, but Townsville could get anywhere between zero up to about 100 millimetres. So again, the forecast still relatively uncertain for them. And rainfall accumulations heading further south. That would, would, for the most part, should be on the more insignificant side. And whilst a couple of millimetres still expected here and there, up to 100 millimetres, in fact, for some locations, it won't be enough to cause significant flooding and will just feel like a couple of showers. Same into the North Queensland area around the Mackay area. Significant falls are possible up to about that 100 to 150 millimetre mark, but they're really not worth airtime at this point because it will be spread over a couple of days. Won't be anything significant enough to cause flooding concerns in those areas. Now, just pushing the forecast forward, you can see that rainfall on Tuesday and Wednesday and then just persisting throughout the week as well uh, from that upper level uh, trough does begin to uh, fly up a few significant rainfall accumulations, especially as we are expecting some pretty solid rain to come through on, like I said, Tuesday and Wednesday. And then through Thursday, Friday and Saturday, some heavier showers are still expected around the Casper Coast as well and throughout North Queensland just in general. And as such, 14 day, uh, 10 day rainfall accumulations could be up around that 500 to 550 millimetre mark. My personal take on is it is it between the Yarraba Peninsula down to about Townsville, so excluding Townsville though, but including the Ingham and the Halifax in the Cardwell area, falls could be as high as about 750 millimetres. And whilst 1,000 millimetre accumulations are more or less off the table at this time, I would not be surprised if a couple of stations got close to that, especially around the Cardwell Gap area. Some significant falls are possible in those areas. And then up into the Daintree Rainforest as well, accumulations up around that five to 600 millimetre mark are also possible with the heaviest falls expected around the uh, Daintree River mouth. Uh, we could be seeing falls there up to about 700 millimetres or so, but probably on the, uh, that would definitely be on the heavier side and definitely nothing more significant than that can be expected. But yeah, from that upper level low, you can see the GFS really calling for some significant falls. So through Tuesday and Wednesday is one that I want to be talking about in a future forecast update. And certainly uh, around the uh, Townsville area, it might be time to keep your guard up a little bit in some of the rainfall here. Keep a very close eye on the forecast and check back in with a video update tomorrow. There'll be two updates tomorrow actually on the rainfall event that's expected to unfold through here. I'll have some more definitive answers on this rainfall and what we are expecting in terms of numbers and impacts through there. But in short, for far north Queensland, do not panic, do not worry. There's a stock standard rainfall that's coming through here. And whilst it might be cause for concern for some people, there is absolutely no significant need to worry at this time. So no need for preparations either. I'll advise you the second I know if there's a need for preparations from this rainfall event here. But again, do not panic, stay safe and stay calm in this rainfall event and just enjoy the rainfall. You've recovered from the flooding up there. And certainly some people do need a little bit of rainfall. For the most part, a lot of people are drenched up there, but there are some areas that do need a little bit of top up rainfall now. So we head closer towards the dry season. But to be honest, again, the rainfall is more likely to be enjoyable and uh, more than it will be problematic up in far north Queensland. Whilst we are talking about things tropical, I feel like we've touched on the Gulf of Carpentaria enough, but in terms of the rainfall forecast for the Northern Territory, some good stuff coming in on the last 10 days of March by the looks of things. Some heavy falls expected up around the Kakadu area from about the 24th of March onwards. We could be seeing accumulations up there around that 200 millimetre mark throughout the top end of the Northern Territory. The rainfall accumulations, though, have been carked from the forecast, at least from the GFS uh, forecast over the last couple of runs. So it is still a little bit of an uncertainty as to how much rainfall the Northern Territory is going to pick up. But one thing's for sure, in the next week or so, nothing too crazy can be expected. A couple of spots, especially around the Darwin area and then up around the uh, Wadai area, Nullanby, we could be seeing accumulations between 100 up to about 200 millimetres along the coastline there from showers and thunderstorms, but nothing significant as we head further inland. And then as we push the forecast forward later on into the forecast period, rainfall accumulations look like they pipe up once again into the Northern Territory as we see a bit of a rainfall event slash uh, northwesterly event actually develop, or maybe even a tropical on the Gulf of Carpentaria, who knows at this point, uh, developing and sucking in quite a bit of rainfall by the looks of things. And yeah, the 
GFS is also on board with that as well, with a bit of a low pressure system developing in the team or of the Gulf of Carpentaria. So one thing's for sure, rainfall accumulations over the next seven days will be nothing grand across much of the Northern Territory, but some significant falls are possible if the Gulf of Carpentaria tropical low begins to develop out towards the later parts of the forecast period. So from about the 24th of March onwards, Monday the 24th of March out to the end of March, we could be seeing a bit of uh, rainfall developing in those areas and as such, well, from a tropical low, and as such, there'll be some much needed rainfall up in the Northern Territory. So it is a little bit unfortunate that that rainfall that we were talking about a couple of days ago has been removed from the forecast. It was never going to be too much rainfall, but still some significant falls were possible and a lot of people getting quite excited for them. Now over towards Western Australia, where we do have tropical cyclones on the forecast, but the forecast is still very uncertain for them. So I'm not going to go too far into detail about these, but one thing's for sure, we're expecting a bit of a tropical low slash cyclone to develop around the Cocos Keeling Islands by around the 19th of March. We're expecting a tropical low to be very much in the way to developing there and then that forming in for tropical low by around next Friday or in towards the next Saturday as well, the 21st out to about the 23rd of March. There will be a weak system by the looks of things getting up to about Category 2, possibly Category 3 status before heading away from the WA coastline and of course not really being a threat of at all to the WA coastline apart from maybe some very high cloud on its closest approach. So again, no impacts expected from this system and it's really not worth time of day or air coverage to be honest at this point. And then later on into the forecast period, if we pull this back a little bit, you can see both the GFS and the Eastern Blair forecast models are calling for a weak depre uh, depression slash tropical low to begin developing around Saturday or Sunday, the 22nd or 23rd of March, offshore from the WA coastline. And then what happens here, the forecast is still very uncertain. It looks like the Eastern Blair F is actually calling for this system to head down south towards the West Australian coastline before heading away from the WA coastline and actually going through some pretty significant intensification throughout uh, the last couple of days of March. You can see getting up to about category four strength severe tropical cyclone status here with some very strong winds around its core. And as a compact system, this would be a very significant uh, intensifier. It'll be able to intensify very quickly. Conditions offshore from Western Australia right out towards the end of April are still very healthy indeed. So I would not be surprised if this came in towards fruition, that's for sure. And the GFS forecast model also calling for this system to begin developing, but much closer to Indonesia. And by the looks of things, it's going to struggle because of how far north it is and its interaction with some high level wind shear. Uh, but yeah, in terms of the forecast of this system here, no real threat to Western Australia at all. It's certainly one to maybe keep in the back of your head if you live along the Pilbara coastline, but even that's a stretch right now if we did it. And if you don't want to think about it, then don't. It's really no threat at all. Um, um, but the forecast is still very uncertain at this time. So it's, we're not 100% sure what's going to be happening with this. And whilst it is exceedingly unlikely that it does go on towards the West Australian coastline, we just don't really know for sure at this time. So I'm not going to be saying anything uh, is possible right now. But at this point, there's certainly no time, no uh, reasonable uh, time that's worth wasting on this system right now. Whilst it is still expected to form or still possible to form, still very likely to form rather it's really not worth time of day at this point and then into the southwest corner of western australia overnight some impressive rainfall accumulations with up to 100 millimeters around the albany area significant rainfall accumulations that's for sure from showers and thunderstorms and you can see heavy rainfall still ongoing into the southwest corner of western australia some thunderstorms and showers moving through my location actually in the southwest corner of western australia at this point uh, you can see rainfall accumulations through there have been pretty impressive as well we're looking at still rainfall rates up around that 10 to 15 millimeter remark uh, type thing and it feels like a beautiful morning as well. Uh, so this rainfall really has done wonders for some of the agricultural communities and again bang on with the forecast in the southwest corner of Western Australia. Widespread falls between that 10 up to that 80 millimetre mark. The heaviest falls weren't actually out as far into the central wheat belt as I was expecting. They were actually closer to Albany so the falls were surprisingly good around the Katanning and the Wundaling area which picked up about 65 millimetres of rainfall so that's very good news indeed for the agricultural communities that did desperately need it the most. Good thunderstorms as well in the Perth area although I am very upset with that uh, absolute fizz banger of a thunderstorm that we got last night. I mean, the severe thunderstorm warnings in Perth, they're very much overkill. And I think everybody in the Perth metro area can attest to that is when you see the damaging winds, large hailstones and heavy rainfall. I think everybody went into an initial panic mode. I mean, the news had an absolute feeding frenzy off it, but, and so did I, I went into the panic, the panic mode as well. I moved my car into the garage as well. Uh, I hit the back wall of it. So not a very good uh, start of the day, that's for sure. But again, these severe thunderstorm warnings, they are very much overkill into the Perth metro area. And whilst the rainfall was significant, I mean, I mean, 15 millimetres falling in about 45 minutes. That is not severe weather, that's for sure. So again, very much overkill on those warnings over in the Perth metro area. And the only people that benefit from that are the clickbait news titles that went absolutely ham on it and got a bunch of clicks and I imagine a bunch of ad revenue as well. Uh, but in the southwest corner of Western Australia, I mean, let me know if it was different in your location around Perth, but I mean, certainly for a lot of locations. And I was looking on the radar as well and talking to people all over the metro area. They did not receive significant impacts at all. In fact, it was weaker than the average winter front, which 
which can get quite wild across the southwest of Western Australia. But anyway, so that is enough. I'm probably just projecting right now the disappointment of not getting a severe thunderstorm, that's for sure, across the southwest corner of Western Australia. I was very excited for yesterday, and it really didn't eventuate. But in terms of the damage, it's very minor indeed across the southwest corner of Western Australia. And again, not really worth airtime. But on that note, I'm going to wrap this video up. Thank you so much for watching the video to this point. The support lately has been much appreciated. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing as well. Again, the support has been much appreciated. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, I could not really show without them and their support is much appreciated as well. But that is all for me today. And I'll catch you all in the next storm.